If you were like dating a guy and y'all were like I introduced love, myself you... as Bradley because I like people to have the option to oh. call me Brad or something else. But like a lover in the future. <laughs> if you're like you're dating this guy and he's uh, like, what do you want him to call you? Um, if you say schnookums, I'm going to leave. Ew, no. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Being gay, being out, being queer is such a cool thing. And yes, there are tough aspects of it, but you have a community. There's so many heart-wrenching, heartbreaking stories, and those are so valid. But also, there's a lot of stories of joy. Welcome, welcome to today's episode of the podcast, where we're talking about joy and queer things. <laughs> <laughs> Brad feels more like professional, almost. Oh, and like I think you're authentic, right. or not authentic, authority. Brad does. Brad does, and Bradley feels more friendly. So, ah, I, so I kind of like both. It's the Lee on it. Yeah, something. My siblings makes they, you feel younger. Their nickname, one of the nicknames that I have in my family, because we have a billion nicknames in my family. They call me Stacy Lee. <laughs> okay. Bro, I don't know. Just <laughs> makes it. Stacy Lee. It's and endearing. they say it with, like, with glee. <laughs> okay, Bradley. <laughs> this is um, perfect. I am here today with, what's your last name? Talbot. I asked you that already. <laughs> <laughs> have you like This never... is not going on a great, this is not a great start, y'all. <laughs> You don't need I, to know my last name, I guess. I am here with, I want to ask you again just for kicks and giggles. Bradley Talbot. I am here with Bradley Ta Talbot. <laughs> what is going on? Bradley's been a friend of mine for quite some time, and I'm super stoked to have him on the podcast. You might recognize Bradley from Lighting of the Y at BYU, mm -hmm. and it was rainbow lit. Color the Campus on Instagram. Uh, the Mormon No More podcast. No, show Hulu on show. Hulu. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so Bradley has been around in the limelight for a while. What did I miss? What else might people might, might um, not? Much. I met that's you through kinda... a podcast. That was the first time we met. Oh, that's right. Yep. I still have that recorded. I still haven't published that what? <laughs> <laughs> because I need to edit it. And I was like, and we didn't really talk about anything specific. I was like, I don't know what the <laughs> theme is here. And so we just were chatting. How long ago did we do that? Uh, like 2019, maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were like the last person I interviewed. I was like, okay, hey, we're done. I'm, my career is not in podcasting. <laughs> Clearly mine isn't either. <laughs> like, I love it. So funny how that's turned. It's I was like, interviewing you. Now you're interviewing me. The tables have turned and I'm worse. You know, I love, I, love <laughs> I knew your last name. So we got that. <gasps> wait, wait, I was going to quiz you, but you know my last name off the top of your head. Harky. Oh, you're good. What about my middle name? I don't know. Well, well, well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so I want people to get to know you a little bit because okay. we've known each other off and on for years and we've like, we do this thing where we'll grab sushi once every blue moon, mm -hmm. which we're going to get later today. Yeah, we are. Callan Curtis. Oh, sorry. Anyways, so um, I want to give people a chance to get to know you in like a very fun way. And okay. I did this with Daniel Spencer and it was, I just had such a good time. Have you seen the video going around of Tyra Banks interviewing Beyonce or Mary J. Blige? No. And she plays this game where she like slaughters their name with a theme to ask them like a specific question. <laughs> no. Like for instance, I think my favorite was <laughs> she's like asking, she's like interviewing Mary J. Blige and she's like changing her name up and she's like, Fairy J. Blige, do you believe in miracles or something? Like it's like little like crazy things. But I did that with your name, Curtis and Cal okay. jumped in it too. We had a good time. So I'm going to okay. interview you by slaughtering your name. And you know what? You already did. I did. Bradley Tabot. <laughs> Talbot. <laughs> Talbot. Tablet. Talbot. Tablet. Is that what you said? <laughs> Talbert. A lot of people thought it was Talbot. Talbert. Nerds. What? Where did they even get that? I mean, at least they, at least they tried. Like, even high school teachers would call me Talbert. Like, they're reading the roster mm. and they... That's um, like... High school teachers get some grace because they just go through so many names. Yeah. And they're probably burnt out. Them. I don't have an excuse. I... You're the only <laughs> name I know. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's start off at the top. Okay. Gradley, what did you study? Where, where did you get your undergrad in? What are you studying? Yeah, so I got my undergrad in psychology and family life at BYU. Um, and I'm currently getting ready to go to Boston College to study social work. You're actually leaving in like a couple days. Yeah, like I have like two, three days left. So I'm really glad we snagged So you. we, this is the last, last chance to, <laughs> to see me before I just go I'm off. I'm sorry, this is how you're spending it. <laughs> <laughs> I just got all giggly all of a sudden. Okay, Dadly. Oh my gosh, I actually know <laughs> I have, my EFY kids called me Dadly. <laughs> like that was a legit name. 
<laughs> well, this they is call me Bradley Dadley. And Bradley was, Dadley? Yeah. Well, Dadley, what is, does like the ideal family look like for you? Like when you imagine in the future, mm-hmm. you're like, have your little nuclear family. What does that look like? Um, <clears throat> I mean, a husband, obviously. Um, I would love to have kids. Um, How many kids do you want? I would love to have a lot of kids, actually. How many is a lot? I don't know. Six is a lot, <laughs> but I don't think I'll be able to ever In this economy? Have. Yeah, exactly. So uh, <clears throat> I think anything more than six is like, okay, that's too much. Mm-hmm. So six is like the max. What if like you have five kids and you're like, we're going to try for one more. Well, I want, and you get, like, it has to be something. even because they're, I feel like they have to have a buddy. Oh. And if it's odd, there's always going to be one who just doesn't have a buddy. Do you have a big family? I have five siblings, so there's six of us. Oh, okay. So is that kind of like model of your family? Like we yeah. all kind of had our partners? Yeah. Oh. So either four or six or, I mean, I guess it's not a big deal, but. Any guys that are listening, six <laughs> kids, yes. All right. That's a lot of kids though. So that's, <clears throat> in, the, in theory, yes, but in reality, probably not. That is a lot. Okay. Madly, what's the last thing that like enraged you? I can't believe I'm doing this. I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying that. Um, uh, I don't know. That's tough. Cause that That's might be tough. like a private question too. Well, there's a lot of things that I kind of just, I get up, upset, but then I just let it just go by. And I, okay. I well, what's the last thing that made you like upset? Well, just when people are like, <laughs> like when people are like, why are you mad? And I'm like, I'm not mad. <laughs> and now I'm mad. Like I had that happen at work where I was just like, I don't know. I have a very serious face, I guess, when I'm not thinking things. And they're like, why are you like upset at me? Or like, you seem like you're in a bad mood. And I'm just like, well, now I am. But so madly when people make you mad. Yes. When they, they assume you're mad. When they assume I'm mad. And now I'm mad. Because now I'm like, why do you think that? No, I'm fine. But now I'm not. A lot of these are kind of like. RBF. Yes. Resting Brad That's face. What I, I, try, I was trying to think of what it was. That's, yeah. Resting Bradley face. Resting Bradley face. <laughs> That's yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. I have a really bad one. Especially if I'm wearing a mask. Then, like, you can't see my face. Mm. And I just look like I am judging everybody. Ooh. Which I probably am. You probably are. I probably am, but. Okay. Badly. What is, like, how would you, what would you call your fashion sense? And where'd you get your sense of style? It is all just BYU. <laughs> like I have so many BYU clothes just because I have a lot of family that works at BYU. And uh, so I just get a ton of free. Oh, I have never bought anything BYU, but I have a BYU water bottle. I have a BYU jacket, a BYU hoodie, a BYU coat, like one of those athletic coats. I have a BYU, uh, beanie. I have BYU gloves. I have like 20. Lot. I have so many. I've never paid for any of it. It all just has been given to me. Okay, good. You didn't steal any? No. Because that would be crazy to steal from the Lord's that, University. That would be. Oh my I, gosh. I would never. <laughs> I love, um, my, I think I did a reel about it where it was like, <clears throat> people were like, what did you do since I came out and I'm dating? And people were like, oh my gosh, what did you do with your BYU clothes? And I was like, I wear them on dates. Like, what else do you do with them? That's awesome. <laughs> like, shine that. And for the people, and we didn't go over this, how do you identify LGBTQ wise? Uh, gay, he, him. Dope. Stacy, he, him. I never go over my pronouns. It's like terrible. <laughs> Listen, we, we learn, we grow, we move on. Let's go. Okay. Bratley. <laughs> What's the most annoying thing about you? <laughs> I feel like I talk a lot, honestly. And oh, yeah? You're yeah, in the right place I for just, this right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Like, especially on dates, I feel like I'm just like constantly talking. And I'm like, wait, I should let you talk. <laughs> and then you hijack um, because like they're boring. Yes. And I'm, it's not that I'm trying to like hijack or anything. I just am trying to make sure they're feeling comfortable and I'm feeling comfortable. And I just have a lot of things to talk about, I guess. Oh. Um, but at the same time, it takes me a long time to like get comfortable. Yeah. And so when I'm in like a new workspace or class or whatever, like a lot of people don't even notice me because I'm just very quiet. I tell people all the time, like I am very awkward on dates, very awkward. And people are like, but you're like so chill. And I'm like, I am a mode of awkward. It's very different. There's like expectations and stakes. And all of a sudden I'm like, I think I was on a date. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Oh my gosh. I hope he's not listening. I was on like a third date with this guy. And I, that's when the awkward really kicked in. And we were like walking around the river just going on a little river trail walk. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, Stacy, you're walking weird. Just like walk normal. <laughs> I was like both a hand with each foot. I was like, stop. Just walking. And I remember being like, you got to say something. It's too quiet. And I was like, I, 
I once saw a rat around here. And I was like, what are you saying, Stacy? I was like, stop. The worst thing to say. I was like, walking like, <laughs> I was like, why am I this way? Well, oh, good stories. Mm-hmm. Okay, last but not least. Okay. Sadly, oh, what do you do when you're sad? What's your like go-to thing to like help lift your spirits or like process? Sleep, go get Ooh. food. Can I get an amen? Read. Read, read what? Netflix. I, I've been really into Percy Jackson. <gasps> Recently, I just read all of the books, like really? all twenty-one, like all the series. I heard it's good, and I'm I'm obsessed with. Are it. they making a series soon? Yes, on Disney Plus. On Disney Plus. Oh, you know it's gonna be good. And he's directing it. Percy Jackson himself? No, Rick Riordan. I have no idea who. The I author. Thought, I was thinking for some reason Percy Jackson was the <laughs> Percy author. Percy Jackson. It's himself. an it's a, it's an no, autobiography. Actually, <laughs> Actually, um, this is so nerd of me, but Percy Jackson's birthday was yesterday. Okay. Wait, um, wait, no, wait. No, not yesterday. Wait. Two days ago. Sorry, because it wasn't yours. Because my birthday no, two is, days yes, ago. was yesterday. And the Empire State Building, they lit it up in blue for Percy Jackson's birthday. Also, wait, so that wait, they. Wait, could, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Why? Have you not read the books? Percy no. Jackson loves blue. But why is, is the Empire State Building like a fan of Percy Jackson? The Empire State Building is where the gods of Olympus are. In the book. In the book. Got you. Yes. I was like, what is and this And so they tie? lit it up in blue because actually in the book, that's what happened. And I found out that they got footage of that to put in the series. So oh, that's like amazing. it all just came together. I was like, wow, that is the coolest thing. I was so confused anyway. for a second. I was like, why is the Empire State Building celebrating? Everyone like who's seen Percy book? Jackson will get it. You won't, but they're they'll, gonna come they'll understand me. why that's, that's such two. a big deal. Strike one for me was <laughs> missing name. your name like four times. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I have never like... I don't, I don't thought about my name. last name that much. Um, What's my name in your phone? Just Bradley? <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> do you not put I do put Q. This guy. I think it might just be Bradley. Hold on, let's Sugar see. Sugar baby? Sugar baby. It's Schmuckums. That's why you know what else we <laughs> Bradley Twitter. <laughs> Bradley Twitter. <laughs> so your okay. initials are the same. Okay. Okay. Because he is very active. What's your Twitter handle? Um, I'm actually not active on Twitter anymore, but it's the same as my Instagram, the Brad Pad. Oh, oh, I thought it was like Alpha Daddy or something. Well, no, I have an Alpha Daddy cult on Twitter, <laughs> but I had to step away from that because it was too much. The Alpha Daddy responsibilities sound like <laughs> insurmountable. Yeah, it was a lot. It was, it was a great time, but Twitter was just, it was too much for me. Once I graduated, I was like, I cannot keep up with this. You have to like take a breather. And you're Absolutely. running like a bunch of social medias like Color the Campus. I was, yeah, it was like my life. It was my job. I was very active on all of it. And now I've just kind of stepped back and now I just do like Instagram because I can do that like once yeah. a week and I can maintain that a little bit. But it is a lot of work because once you kind of step in that public space, then you have a little bit of an obligation to advocate and educate and, yeah. and make sure you're it's talking like about use the right that thing. Platform, to right? use that platform Ooh. for good. And so... I just kind of got handed this platform by accident and I'm like, okay, well, Wait, I want to do... tell me more. What do you mean you got handed by accident? <laughs> well, like with Color the Campus, like I never thought it was actually going to become a thing. <laughs> you just like did it for fun? Like I just did Instagram it. Thing? I just felt, it actually was a very spiritual process for me, but I felt inspired to do it and to all, like all the steps was very much like I felt guided and I didn't think it was actually going to become something long term. Yeah. Do you mind if I pry a little bit sure. more? Sure. About what do you mean like a spiritual process? Was it <clears> like... Do you feel like it was something like you prayed about and you felt guided in that sense? Or do you just feel like it all like lined up in a way that felt like serendipitous? Or? So, um, actually you're actually a part of it. Um, <gasps> because I just remembered this. So I started, did you have a dream campus. of me? No, and I... <laughs> but, um, no, there was, I started kind of the campus in 2019, um, <laughs> September area, but, but leading up to that, um, cause you had just come out, I, December yes. Oh yeah. In 2018. Mm-hmm. So I remember, and I was telling you about this, like I was obsessed with you. I was like, he is so cool. Wait, tell everyone else so they can also know. <laughs> I love <laughs> So we Studio can also C. understand you. <laughs> I was obsessed with you. I thought it was so cool. I saw your face to face when I was on my mission. And I was Which like, is what, so Studio C is a sketch comedy group we did with BYU <laughs> TV and gained some in, like popularity in like the Utah area, especially in like amongst members of the LDS faith. Mm-hmm. And we did a face to face, which was like this giant, like, we were interviewed like by a couple interview. of the youth. Well, it was it was like live broadcast, like all the youth of the LDS church, mm-hmm. which was like kind of a. I remember being yeah. like, "Ooh, this feels like a big, big mantle to." Like, yeah, yeah. And you said it, you enjoyed that. So yeah, I watched that on my <clears throat> mission. I don't know if that's when it came out or if I was just you, late when to we were the on game. Your mission? 
where? Right, right, right. You said it was like 2016. Early 2016. So this that's was before. When we did it. Yeah, that's around the time we did this, it. Yeah. Um, so I had seen it and I watched it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then you came out in 2018 and I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much respect for him. And I think I reached out to you and that's where we first started that's to become friends. friends. Um, but anyway, that summer, like leading up to when I first officially made the account, um, I had a lot of different experiences at BYU with people saying things that were insensitive mm. and, oh, I don't want to be their friend or, oh, gay people are this. And I just was like, where is my place? This sucks. Um, and then you had started dating somebody. <gasps> and I... Oh my gosh, we called him... Should I tell this story? We called him Sexy Jesus. He's long <laughs> oh hair, gosh. beard, yeah. <laughs> really handsome guy, uh, super great guy. Sometimes I would... <laughs> We, we, we could cut this if we need. Sometimes I would joke about it with him because he'd be like, he grew up LDS, he, but he had been like, he lived in New York for 10 years, mm -hmm. whatever. And I sometimes would be like, you know what? I think I like you because you remind me of our Lord and Savior. And he'd be like, oh stop. And I'd be like, call me one of the so 12 rough. apostles because I'll follow you. He's oh like, my stop. <laughs> but I love to just like tease him about it. That's awful. He was very put off. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so there was a lot of factors that, that uh, led to me starting it. But... Um, so like me dating was so you, you dating like, somebody. I just remember even just like laying in bed at night and thinking about like, wow, he is making it work. Mm. Um, I didn't know exactly where you were spiritually, but oh, I knew like you going were, to church. But and stuff. I knew yeah, you at least like wanted to have at least some part. You weren't like totally saying goodbye to it, and mm -hmm. I was like, I resonate with that, and mm -hmm. I want what Stacy is is trying to get. You know, everybody wants a sexy Jesus in there. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Like. Can the choir say amen? <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the reasons I was like, I want to start this group where people feel connected and mm -hmm. feel like they can, they're at BYU. There's so many people who are saying, just leave, get out of mm. BYU. And people saying, just leave the church. And there's space for that. Like, are those the only options? But is that really the only option? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, Stacy's not doing that. I don't want to do that. I, so that was one of the way that, one of the reasons that I started. Um, with spiritual, like being guided. And then also I was having dreams about, painting campus in like rainbow <gasps> colors get out like consistently for like a month and vandalism i was like dreams? <laughs> yeah vandalism dreams criminal activity um, <laughs> i i thought it was the weirdest thing i was like this is i don't know what that means yeah oh cool um, though yeah it's like looking back i was the like technical wow. dream code stuff i dig and even just like some other weird things like i was an efy counselor in mm. the summer of 2018 and that was the first time i got instagram i, I didn't have oh. social media before that did you feel like because I feel like so, with me, I got social media out of like need where it's like, okay, I need to do this to stay connected. I got social media because I felt like inspired to get it. Like oh. something told me you need to get Instagram. And before I'd even like started like, um, wow. EF, like that first week of EFY where everyone's having like those spiritual moments, like mm -hmm. it's that spiritual high. And I was like, wow, this could be an amazing summer. I, one of the things that I felt was most impactful to me was something was telling me, you need to get social media. Mm. And I was totally anti-social media at the time. Really? So I was like, no, I'm not, but no, you need to get it. And so I got it. And now I'm able to kind of see like, I needed that year to, to figure out how Instagram works mm -hmm. so that I could properly like launch this new color of the campus yes because i was brand new i and i made a lot of mistakes i had to really figure out like how do you post and how do you like get... selfies too close to your face <laughs> no i never <laughs> nothing like that but just like understanding how social media works is a little oh. bit of a learning curve and i was late to the game i was like 21 22 mm -hmm. um i got social media like well into my 20s well i'm significantly yeah. older than you <laughs> yeah Wait, i was can i i'm 25 20, oh yeah did I'm we talk about this all the way here? Yeah. I don't remember Because you said you won't though. date anyone younger than 26. Oh, you did too. So. <laughs> he said I'm 25. So I was like, shoot. I did not mean to break your heart, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. I'll get we over it. We had to have a really serious talk on the way here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, and then I, yeah, just felt inspired to start Color the Campus um, and just kind of went from there. And so I just felt like guided like the whole step of the way of how to like make it work. Yeah. To get, people to feel included and like there was a place for them at BYU. So come so. to the campus. Cause I always thought of it as an Instagram account and it's n mm -hmm. more than that. It's like a place for people to feel like they belong. And mm -hmm. it's Instagram the main way that you just like get messages out and reach out to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. So Instagram, a little bit of Facebook, but I think like most people use Instagram. Um, it's not, um, well, so yeah, kind of, I view it more as like a community where mm -hmm. there was a time where I was 
trying to decide if I wanted to make it like an actual like nonprofit or like a formal organization. Mm -hmm. But I kind of was like, no, we have in circle, we have USGA, we have rainbow collective. We have like, we have, there's a lot of, and I was like, I don't want to compete with those. Mm -hmm. I want to work with them. And so I want to create rainbow days for all of these groups to be like, okay, it's like the holiday. We've got rainbow day going on we're all going to celebrate it in our own way. And it's like wearing rainbow on campus mm-hmm. is one of the things, right? Mm-hmm. Just very simple. Just go about your regular day wearing mm-hmm. rainbow. If you want to like participate in any of the events, go to these other groups that have already been well established and they have like the groundwork. I was just one person. I was like, I don't want to make a committee. Yeah, and all. Or like I didn't want to be in, event in charge food, of all of that. Yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to create a community where we, it gives people opportunity to, do something yeah. with their groups that are already and there. And you did such a great job. And I know I don't know if you feel this way, and I and I feel like you've talked about this, but like wearing rainbows can take a lot of like courage sometimes, especially mm-hmm. on like BYU campus mm-hmm. when you identify as queer. But like if you don't wear a rainbow, it doesn't mean you're a coward or whatnot. Because mm-hmm. it's like timing can be tough. Mm-hmm. But to see a rainbow, like see someone wearing a rainbow mm-hmm. is like like, I just can't, I just like, I'm imagining like students on campus who are like feeling trapped and locked down and seeing like rainbows around and feeling just like there's a little bit of support, right? Mm-hmm. And when they're all doing it at, together mm-hmm. at the same time, like that was the it's coolest like, I do part. Have a community. Was our first rainbow day in 2019, there was like 50 people who like participated and most of those were like family and friends or whatever. <laughs> but it was really cool for me to just like go to classes and I would just see like, oh, someone has a little pin or like, oh, someone's wearing like a little rainbow Sure. And it was just like really cool to be like, oh, there's people here that I wouldn't have seen and I wouldn't have known that they mm-hmm. were like someone that was willing to like support me. Or I anything love like that. that. And the rainbow is so such a that good was color the whole too. that was the whole goal is just to get people to have an opportunity to come together as a community mm-hmm. and feel some solidarity. Feel some solidarity. Feel some yeah. support. Mm-hmm. I went to so I went to Lagoon, which is like a theme park here in Utah. And I went on Gay Day. I don't know if that's the official mm. name of it, but it's like mm. this day where it's like Everybody gay, come on in and everyone wear red. So, because there's like a lot of people there. So, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I didn't realize it was so packed. I was like, Lagoon is popping. But the thing that was really interesting about red was I don't know if some people knew that that was gay day and had red on. Oh, like, no. I saw like biker They're dad. like accidentally, like, uh-oh. kind of roughneck biker dad with like his little confederate, like, his confederate hat and like all red. Oh, and I was like, I really hope he's dressed for gay day. <laughs> like that's hilarious. But like versus a rainbow is like a very identifiable. You have to like intentionally. Yeah. Like people don't just casually wear rainbows yeah. anymore. It's like usually like an intentional sort of thing. I did so. like going around being like, like we were trying to figure out if people were intentionally wearing red or not. It feels mm-hmm. like that was on purpose. That was, they messed up. That I love an that. Accident. <laughs> Can yeah, you imagine funny. showing up to rainbow day and you're like all in red, just to, not rainbow day, but like lagoon on gay day, not even aware it's gay day, all decked out mm-hmm. in red. And you're like, why are so many, Men in red red holding hands. (laughs) I loved it. I loved it. Okay. So go back to the part where I changed your life. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) But that actually, I actually didn't know that you were a fan of Studio C when we met. Really? Maybe, or at least maybe I did. Maybe I forgot along the way. Well, yeah, because I wasn't going to let you know I was fangirling. (laughs) No, I'm not going to give you that. Your ego is big enough. (laughs) So it, 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 child, it is. No, Uh, but I love the fact that like, I don't know, that just made me like, you just never know what, like the effect your actions are going to mm-hmm. have. And like you, we had the chance to meet and I had the chance to hear the story, which I feel like for the first time I was like, what? Like on the drive up, I was like, that, maybe I forgot because I'm great at forgetting. <laughs> maybe. But I, um, I think about like the effect that you have that you will never know on making someone feel comfortable or helping someone feel like they have a place or having, helping someone feel like they can honor their religion and their sexuality. Mm-hmm. That's tough. How do you... Like, how do you navigate that? And I'm not really asking, like, where are you at? Because, like, mm-hmm. that's a very private question, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, how do you navigate that? What's the mindset at which you go about it? How do you keep from, like, feeling, like, pulled to extremes? Mm. That's a, that is a good question. It is a journey. You know, it takes a long time to get to a place where you're comfortable asking these hard questions. Mm. Um, of, like, okay, how do I make this work? Like, oh, no, I'm gay. What does that mean? What are, there's so many different paths. There's so many different ways to take this. How am I gonna? How am I gonna do this? What are people gonna think about me? Um, and like it's kind of like cliche, but it, it really comes down to like, I just learn like, the only person who matters is me. Bam. And 
it's hard to be like, oh, I don't care what, like, oh, don't let people judge you. Like, it's hard. Like, yeah. no one's, but it really does come down to, like, I don't care what people think about me anymore. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I'm still trying to make people feel, like, comfortable and, and loved and supported. And, I mean, I have even, like, family and friends who are on the, on the end of, like, not being as supportive as I would like them to be. But I still, like, want to foster that relationship yeah. and, and keep that. Um, have you seen a lot respectful. of people, have you seen a lot of people like shift in support? I feel like just having conversations <clears throat> gets people to realize, oh, my perception of queer people was they were all just self-centered and mm. angry and, and, and cause that's kind of what the media yeah. will push out, especially if you're listening to certain types of media, I guess. Um, and they're like, wait, but you're like normal. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. It's not First off, really like, the compliment you're going for, but don't jump yeah. to conclusions because I'm not, but also thank you. <laughs> but it kind of just makes people realize like, wait, I know Bradley and I was friends with him and he's not what I thought, what like my perception. So it gets people to just change their worldview mm -hmm. and that gets people to shift oh, a little bit. Just I having the conversation. That. And with, I mean, we'll probably get to this, but with <laughs> the why, the rainbow why, Ooh. the main and uh, goal with that was just to open up the conversation. Oh, because um, nothing changes without that. Because nothing changes without mm. that. And again, I'm just kind of the, I wasn't an official organization. There's already these groups that were established that I was hoping would able to pick up and like actually get things moving. I just wanted to open the floodgates of, Hey, we're here. There are queer people on campus. Like, let's not pretend like we're no one exists. And no one's talking about it, and right. it's time we talk about it. Especially because the effect of not talking about it is um, high suicide rates. Mm -hmm. uh, people that get cut off from families. And sometimes there are people that like ostracize themselves from families because they don't feel like they have a place to belong. And what parent wants that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, good. Man, doing some good work. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a big believer that like one of your greatest superpowers is just literally by existing authentically. Yeah. Like by being yourself. So when you talk about the idea of just like having the conversation or just letting mm -hmm. people know we're here, like that is huge. I, mm -hmm. I think in just starting the conversation when I came out in 2018, December, I came out before I went home for Christmas cause I wanted to like face my fears and I was like, I'm going to come <laughs> out and I'm going to go home to Texas and be like, I did it. Now you see me. And I was scared. But when I came home, I wanted to make sure that it didn't become Uncle Stacy's secret. Like mm. I said, I'm gay and we're never going to talk about it again. And yeah. so I did this like kind of awkward thing for the next couple months where I brought it up all the time. And I know someone's probably hearing that being like, what? But my goal wasn't because I was like, woo, we're going to talk about it. I was like, I want to normalize it for my yeah. family. Yeah. And so I told I've... my mom about dates when she didn't ask. And my, oh. and she was like, oh, the first time she was like, oh, now she asked me. Uh -huh. She's like, how are the dates? It's like I had to kind of do that work to like mm. just just normalize it, make sure they yeah. knew it was something on the table that they could like, you know, help themselves to. What were you going to say? I don't remember. I think that's one of the things that I'm trying to like figure out now too is because I do have even some family and friends that we don't talk about it. Mm. And it's so awkward. It's, it's awkward because like, it's a huge I, part of who I am. I, 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 I want to be like, we don't have to talk about it all the time, but I also want them to be like, no, you can, you can ask me, you can talk about things mm -hmm. we can, but it's, it's a hard thing to, to work through when it's just very like taboo. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to make sure it didn't feel taboo and it took a lot of awkward work. I was like, Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. So my parents, my mom and stepdad picked me up from the airport, very devout LDS couple, love them to death. And they picked me up from the airport and I'm like, get in the car and I'm like, close the door. And I'm like, yeah, boy's gay. And they were just like, <gasps> And I was like, y'all get used to it. <laughs> Cause I just <laughs> didn't want it to become a secret. And I wanted to like rip that bandaid off sooner than later. I was like, we gotta just like, it's gonna be a very real part, transparent part of who I am. When I came out to my parents, I was like, I'm gay. Um, I'm gonna marry a man eventually. And cause I just wanted them to have to start thinking about that. Not to yeah. be like, oh, he's gay. So we're gonna make sure, find a nice woman who can deal with that. No. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to like yeah. make it a conversation piece yeah. in a sense. Okay. Question for you. We talked a little bit about this. We talk a lot about it gets better. We hear the term it gets better. So when you're like queer and in the closet and you're like, oh, life sucks sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it gets better. Um, you've come out of the closet. It's been mm -hmm. what? Six years? 
Yes. And you're like dating, mm -hmm. like living your best. You're about to go to Boston. To. <laughs> He's like the protagonist in a rom-com right here. <laughs> I love it. Does it get better? That's a really interesting question because the first like maybe four years, I hated that phrase. Oh my gosh. Tell me more. Because... I felt like it was a lie. Mm. And the first time I came out to somebody, I did not have a good experience. <gasps> it was really awful. No. Um, did I they, like, fight you regretted or it. Well, I don't know. You don't have to go into it. Um, he just didn't respond in the way that I was, right. had hoped. And I was really hard on myself and felt like I just ruined a relationship. Mm. It's my fault. I should have kept this down. I need to handle this yeah. better. And it just was not a good experience. Gotcha. Um, and then, so you were like, they say it gets better, but so far. Yeah. Not. I was like, no, I tanked. I was, gotcha. I was doing fine mm. when I had to keep this in. But now that it's out there, I felt so vulnerable and it just was not, I wasn't Opens you up time. to more pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I felt like I was getting rejected over and over. Mm. Um, and just as the years went on, like coming out to family members, friends, acquaintances, like, I think I did have a lot of good experiences too. So yeah. it's very like nuanced, but I did also kind of just feel like I just feel uncomfortable about this. And I feel like that they're judging me, even though they say they things didn't change. It's like, well, I feel like they have now. Mm. And, and maybe I just was putting that on myself and I was too hard on myself, but it took me a long time to kind of feel like it actually was getting better. Yeah. Um, what and was the mark of me, getting better? Well, it took me a long time to even figure out what I wanted. Oh. And so at first I was like, okay, I can accept that I'm gay, but I'm not going to act on it. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole thing. Act on being gay. Act on it. Um, it's like the little gay tem a... <laughs> tempting demons, like be gay. Uh -huh, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's not even Have a, a crush thing. on that boy. Everything like, I no. do is acting on it, you know? No. But. <laughs> uh, right? Because it's a part of who we are. It's a part of me. So I can't just not act on mm -hmm. it. I had a bishop where I came out to him uh -huh. and he was like, well, if you don't act on it. And I was like, bishop. What does that mean? Does that mm -hmm. mean like no kissing? Does, does it, mean it mean no, no hugs? Can I not have male friends? Does can I not hang out with lingering friends? eye contact? Yeah, like what if my heart rate increases? Yeah, because I feel like everything is like in like everything about I'm gay. That's a part of who I am. That's like like everything I do is black because I'm black, right? Yeah, but like even if you're like, well, it's not stereotypical. It's like, well, it feels it's a part of me, right? Yeah. So I remember with him, he was like, oh, that is a let me check with mm -hmm. someone. And then he came back and was like, anything gay? I don't know. And I was like, I, I was like, I'll take it from here. Yeah. I, I can be a steward of my own. Yes. Life. So you're like, so now saying that like the whole act on it thing. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to act on it. And to me that meant I wasn't going to date. I wasn't going to get married. I wasn't going to do anything. I was like, I'm still going to marry a woman and tried that. Didn't work. Um, you married a woman? No, I tried oh, dating. Oh gosh, I was like, bro, you can't, you're not gonna skim <laughs> over this. Imagine? Buckle up. No, um, I tried. Where are I the didn't children? Even, I didn't actually date her. We just, <laughs> I just was trying to date girls, you know, okay. and it didn't last. Did long you ever get like, like close to getting engaged or married? Mm, depends on who well, you, you ask, how, how you define how, that. Who you, know? you ask? Well, like who you ask, like in the moment, like because gotcha. I there was times where I was like, oh yeah, we're totally getting engaged, and I was like. No, we're not. Like, <laughs> that was just something I formulated in my brain. Like, like that wasn't actually which a thing. Brad at which time we ask. I almost got engaged yes. twice. Really? Yeah. But I was always like at the finish line. I don't know why or what presence of mind I had back in the early 2000s. But I was like, God, you have to make this work. <laughs> like, I have to be attracted to her. And that's the last thing we're missing. And when it didn't happen, I was like, I guess. Okay. I try. I'll be like, listen, I did my part. That's not you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally told him, I was like, it. I know this sounds cliche, but it's not you. It's me. It's me. You don't I understand, promise. but I mean it. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. So. Yeah. So. I almost got engaged. <laughs> no, not almost got engaged. But just, I just tried dating girls and it just wasn't working out. Because I was like, I don't even, I don't even feel comfortable asking a girl out yeah. like that just feel so wrong. Like, and, yeah. Unnatural. And I was awkward in and of itself. And I was like, I can't even, ugh, I couldn't do that. Mm. And the thought of holding hands with the girl, I was like, I, what if I do it wrong? Like <laughs> it's, it's like, I no, no, didn't know how to do it. Like having how panic do attacks, people do it? too much anxiety, couldn't do it. So I was like, okay, you know what? We're not doing that. We're not doing that option. I'll just be alone. <laughs> I'll just be by myself. It's the chuckle after <laughs> I'll just be alone. That hits the most. Be like, alone. Oh. I'll just be alone. Um, <laughs> 
and tried that for a little bit and I was like, oh, this isn't working either. Mm. So that was also another reason why I What do you mean it started, wasn't working? Like you were just unhappy? Or I was like... just very lonely. Yeah. Mm. And that was another reason why I started Color the Campus um, was because I just kind of felt like there was no place for me. And mm. I was like, I'm not ready to be in a romantic relationship, but I would love to at least have gay friends, queer friends. Um, but I was just so oblivious. Now I know I had lots of them. They were all around me, just closeted. Ah, um, isn't that funny how that works? Yeah. But at the time I was like, like I'm the, the only movie. one. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was like, I'm the only one. There's no one else like me. Mm -hmm. And so that was another reason I started color the campus just as a way to like get people to be like, Oh, you're gay. I'm gay. We can be friends, you know? Yeah. We can like be um, support. We can, we can be support. And so I wanted, so I like just tried to, to, increase my network, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was also hard because it was really hard navigating. Like some people wanted more than just friends. And sometimes I wanted more than just friends, but I wasn't allowing myself to. Mm. And so the rom-com drama that is part of the <laughs> campus, like that's, that's a whole other <laughs> podcast. I love that. I, I mean, that gosh. concept is real though. Like you're like in situations where your heart is like yearning mm -hmm. for like connection. And I sometimes compare it to like a I want to say it in Portuguese, panela de pressão, a pressure pan, pressure cooker, mm. where if you don't release that pressure, it's going to release one way or the other, mm -hmm. and it can be very dangerous. So yeah. like stifling a part of yourself like that can lead yeah, to like... Yeah, so I was like slowly opening, like letting, yeah. letting it out, because I was like, I'm not, I'm going to keep it contained because I'm not willing to... Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it took me a long time. I guess my point is it was like four years from actually coming out that I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna marry a man. Um, and that's when things started getting better? Mm, yes and no. Cause that was like four years was like the, the timeline you said earlier. So I'm like, wow. Yeah, well that's when, so like the first four years I felt like they just got worse and worse and worse. Okay. Then since then it's kind of just been like a lot of up and down where Ooh. I think overall, yeah, I think maybe things are getting better. Um, but sometimes it's like, no, I'm still single and it's still, it's like not working out for me. So <laughs> that is... I'm feeling better in like my authenticity mm -hmm. and like my community and like just the love and support and just so much amazing and queer joy. We'll, we'll talk about, Ooh, let's talk about, that. Ooh. um, but I'm still like not where I want to be yet. That's like really real of you to address the fact that like life it's, it's not like, cause I know before I came out, I was like, Either it's going to be terrible and everything that I was afraid of is going to be come true. Like I'm going to come out and then I'm going to be like, Satan's going to get me and it's going to be so bad. I'm going to be so unhappy and wickedness never was happiness. Or I'm going to come out and it's going to be everything I've ever dreamed of mm -hmm. and I've ever wanted. And I came out and I was like, I'm living life just more fully. I'm having ups and downs. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest change for me is the whole get, it gets better. My definition of better has changed <gasps> oh. a lot. Um, and I think that's why it took me about four years to kind of, wrestle that because I was thinking, oh, it gets better. Like, oh, I'm going to be happy now. Things are going to work out. It's going to be great. I'm going to have all this amazing things happen. And I was like, no, none of this is happening. I'm still having a lot of hard, difficult experiences. But now my definition of better is I just feel things more fully. Yes. And the spectrum, like sometimes I am just like in the dumps, like just super low, but that's still better than mm -hmm. where I was before, which was nothing. I was very apathetic, very unfeeling for most of my life. I am a big believer too that like, and I know that I see this in my life and I believe this for other people, which was kind of weird to say actually, I believe this for other people. But the concept for me is that like, when you stifle parts of yourself, you can't like cut off one part. Like we're like, all it's these areas all, of health are connected. Like the, they're, they're connected like the Olympic rings. When one goes up, the other ones go up. When one goes down, they're all connected like a chain. And so when you stifle, who you are, your like emotions or your connection, you are mm -hmm. stifling all these other areas. Mm -hmm. And when I came out, I feel like I was like tasting food fully. Like I was like mm -hmm. seeing in like full color. Rom-coms now can make me cry, which in a way I was like never <laughs> really attached to them. But now I'm like, man, she really was sleepless in Seattle. Like, I'm like, <laughs> why is this like hitting me now? Yeah. You know? So I really resonate mm -hmm. with that of like, you're living a more expansive, like your mm -hmm. experiences and your feelings are more expansive. And that's my whole like motto with color the campus is it's not black and white. It's rainbow. It's this beautiful spectrum mm. of good and bad, but at least you are feeling and you're living. And yes. so yeah, it gets better 
Yes, but not maybe in the way that you're thinking. Yeah. Like it's it's still going to be hard. It's still is difficult. Whatever path you take, I've said this a lot, like whether you decide to leave BYU, stay at BYU, stay in the closet a little longer, come out, leave mm-hmm. the church, no matter what you take, it's going to be hard. Yeah, so is life, right? So is life. But my hope is that people at least feel that they have someone to do it with, that they're mm-hmm. not alone now. And I think that's the biggest change that I've seen on campus yeah. is now it's like, there are so many people who are there who are willing to sit with you, cry Mm -hmm. with you, laugh with you. And when I first started BYU, I genuinely didn't think that was even possible. I thought I was the only one, that there was no one out. There was no one. I think about what you said earlier, where you said coming out exposed you so much and you felt like it was like, you know, this isn't better, but it's like what comes with exposing yourself is the higher chance of being hurt. You're like not as guarded, but what comes with that also is a higher chance of reward, a higher chance of connection, a higher chance of finding love or finding mm-hmm. camaraderie or solidarity. It's like this like double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Queer joy. Let's talk about it. What does that mean? And I don't have a definition for the term queer joy, mm-hmm. but like, what does that mean to you? And Do you feel like you've experienced that in your life? Um, I think queer joy is just feeling like a connection to your identity of like who you are. And, um, I don't know, like, I don't know if I have a real definition of that either. That's kind of hard, but I, I can feel like looking back on, um, let's see, like when I was working with color the campus and like that first kind of mentioned this, that first like rainbow day and like people were all wearing rainbows and I was like going to class and I was like, someone else is like me or whatever. Like someone that I didn't know who I didn't, hadn't told about had Mm -hmm. somehow found out about this. Um, and then that first rainbow day was kind of like rainy and there was a rainbow afterwards like a legit rainbow a legit in the rainbow in the sky not like a gay student on top of a building no a, no like there was a real rainbow in the sky and just like wow this that was is a deadly joke my bad <laughs> oh my gosh. this is like i don't know this is like real this is meaningful and then um just conversations with people um there was someone who reached out to me a little while ago who told me that um the day that we lit the y the first time so back in 2021 um, the night before rainbow day, um, he had come home from work, was having like a real hard time Mm. and came home and all of his roommates, it was like late and all of his roommates were around the kitchen table, whatever. And they're all making rainbow shirts. And they're like, we're doing this for you. We want you to feel loved and included. And, and tomorrow's rainbow day. And we're really, and it was like the first time that he felt, um, like support, like he hadn't even like fully come out to them, I don't think. Um, and so that brought me a lot of queer joy to be like, no, like we love each other. We're there for each other. And it's, it's hard. It sucks. But, it, um, people are wanting to like show that more. That's the beauty of bringing the conversation, like mm-hmm. bringing the conversation. Just when giving you talk about it. Yeah. It's like people might have moments where they avoid it and that can really be hurt. But then you find moments where like, your roommates are like rallying, making shirts for you. You see other people wearing rainbows mm-hmm. and you're like, you're just like so stoked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this idea of like the closet, when you come out, something that you don't realize is once you've come out of that first closet, you've come out of like a lot of closets oh. because being queer, you're, you're like questioning everything now. Oh, yeah. You're going to wear whatever you want. You're going to say whatever you want. You're going to mm-hmm. be a part of things that are breaking all these binaries and it's like you're coming it, out of the closet you're of, coming out and i think that's something that i wish more straight people would i agree straight cis people would be more comfortable with like like lose the pressure to conform use, and just to like dis- self-discovery yes, not even in the conversation of sexuality and gender but just mm-hmm. like you can do more things and break out of i don't know like i that's probably one of the elements of queer, elements of queer joy i love is like it's self-discovery like can i would never have worn like a Victoria's Secret rainbow Ariana <laughs> Grande sweater. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, but I like it and maybe I won't wear it anymore, but I feel cool just being like, I'm gonna try it out. See what yeah. happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I should tell people I didn't buy this at Victoria's Secret. I <laughs> yes, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, they contacted me on Instagram and were like, Hey, uh, Stacy, you have a lot of followers. Do you want to pick from our Victoria's Secret, like clothing options? And I was like, 
do they know I'm a man? <laughs> and yes, <laughs> I was like, and I had to like look up women's sizes and how they convert to men's sizes. And I got me this sweater and I did it wrong. Apparently all the clothing I got was weird fitted, but I did it. And I didn't feel super weird about it. Yeah. I felt a little weird. <laughs> it just, it opens up that, that door for you mm-hmm. to just try new things. Yes. So, because now that you, you're out of the closet for that, you, it's like, what's stopping you from just breaking down all these other barriers. Trying these other things that I felt mm-hmm. shame surrounding. So I think that brings a lot of queer joy as well. Bradley, I think that's a great end to this. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us. Isn't he great? Where can we find you? you? Where can people, if people want to know where Bradley is. <laughs> um, Instagram, the underscore Brad pad. Bradley, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>